here we are back at our local site and we're raring to go to find things. We are. Um, and we just pulled something up here and mum's found a few things. So <laughs> let's show you what we've got. Just the lip of this bottle was sticking up and I decided to pull it and I kept pulling and then this whole massive bottle came out and it's huge, it's massive. Who knows how that managed to survive? It is a little bit broken on the lip though unfortunately there's some cracks in it but otherwise the whole thing is complete. So if we can find a bottle like this it's complete then we might find a whole cod bottle or ginger beer bottle, you never know. Okay, so my first finds are this figurine top. She's got her dress missing, but uh, that might clean up quite nice. Looks like she's got really long plaited hair and this bonnet on. Um, another little vial and these are so thin and delicate, I don't even know how they survive. And also a little bone thing, not sure what that is. Could be the end of a cotton reel of some sort. Look down here. This looks like, I thought it was like a little tiny garnet, like a green garnet. A travesite garnet, I think. But if I'm not mistaken, it's actually a glass bead, a faceted glass bead. Green, beautiful, love it. I think I found a whole viral bottle. Whenever I find these, they're always broken. This one isn't, might keep that. I don't know what this is, but... I think it's a bead! I think it's a bead! I think it might be a bead. Oh, that's wonderful! <gasps> it's beautiful! Oh, look at it! It's just like, you know what, it looks like a bigger version of the one I found yeah. the first time we came, doesn't it? That's that blue one, beautiful. It? Let me zoom in. Wow! Look at that! I love it! Wow! Okay, so I've just scraped out this bottle which is a bit funky. I think it might be a vinegar bottle. I think that's what it is. It's an interesting design. Um, and I'll put that to the side because I also found this gorgeous little sky blue bead. So that's two beads so far today. Three, including the one mum found. Beautiful, you know how we love beads. Okay, so I've just uncovered this bottle and I want to see if it's, oh, is that hexagonal, octagonal. Oh, it's got, it's got words on it. It's got words on it. What do they say? Let's see. Dog mixture. Dog mixture. What? That's like? Dog mixture. What? That's weird. Wait, I'm zoomed in. Let me zoom out a bit. What else does it say? Benbow's, Benbow's dog, dog mixture. mixture. Well, what I've never seen one of those before. That's cool. It's chipped on the bottom, but it's not all the way through. But that's interesting. That is really interesting. I just found some part of something very, very rare. And it's a piece of pipe stem, but you might just notice that it is terracotta. A terracotta pipe bowl is on our bucket list. We'd love to find a whole terracotta pipe bowl because they are very rare and collectible. But we've got a pipe stem here, so we're part of the way there. And then down here, I spotted the tiniest, where is it? The, the tiniest little kind of white or clear bead. I think it's a bit melted. These old rubbish dumps were burnt and so a lot of the glass and things got melted. A lot. That's why a lot of the bottles are kind of all squished. <laughs> Looks like that's what happened to this poor little bead. 
but it's coming home with us. Found a bone button, which is cute. I like finding bone buttons. Bit of pipe stem and two bottles. It's quite a lot of broken bottles. That one's got nothing on it, and that one is small, but I'm trying to resist taking these small bottles home. So I am going to leave that here. But I will take the little button because they're cute and I like them and they don't take up much room. And the pipe stem we can use for things, so. Look at this bead, look how it glows. I just spotted That's it. So I was skimming my eyes across the surface. Look. Wow. That's the most beautiful, beautiful amber bead you've ever seen. Oh, that might be um, uranium glass. It might be radioactive. <laughs> so we'll have to um, get the UV torch on that when we get home. But that is amazing faceted bead. Love it. These beads are making my day. Look at this. It's a little tiny jug. It's handles missing, that's a shame. But look how small it is. It's really pretty as well. It's got like grass, green grass pattern around it. Something here. Not sure what it is. Oh, what's that? I don't know what that is. Hmm. I have to take it and uh, have a closer look at home. There's something here. Not sure what it is. Let's see. It looks like a hand. <laughs> it's just a hand and an oh. arm holding something. Must have been like maybe oh. a lady holding a basket or something. Yeah. That's funny. Just uncovered this little bottle and to my delight there is words on it and it says Vino's, what's that say? Lightning Cough Cure. And I think it's whole. I don't think it's damaged. So that's brilliant. I'll keep that. Don't think we have that bottle. Don't think we have a Vino's. Love it. Oh, actually, there's another pipe. Oh, no, wait, there's another one. <laughs> uh, two pipe balls. There's quite a few of them lying around here, actually. I think I can see some others up there. Oh, just pulled this out. Another little saw stopper. I've actually found whole pile of broken marmalade jars and I think that's a bit of a ginger beer jar. Look at the base of this. That's huge. That would have been a massive jar or a bottle. And a cream jug which has got its handle missing so I think I'll leave that here. Oh look! I've never found one of these before. Oh, look! Wow. It's one of those bumpy, I think it's what do you call them? Like hobnail poisons or something like that. Never found one of these. Look, it says on there, not to be taken. Oh, that is so cool. Wonderful. Love it. I think it's a lovely dark amber colour look. Wow. I love that. Perfect. Oh, I'm so happy. I think I found a paint pan. Oh, I love finding paint pans. Yes, it's got reeves, I think. Is that, yeah, reeves yeah. on the back. Oh, that's, that's like a long one. We it's a one reeves like paint pan. Yay. Yay. Bottle extraction. Oh, it's got writing on it. It says Adam's essence of what does that say? Oh rennet. Oh, rennet. That's out of like. Isn't that out of a cow's like a calf's stomach? Something. And it says Glasgow. And they used rennet. Um, st still do probably for making cheese. 
Oh, that's, that's quite interesting. interesting yeah. Yeah. This has just come flying out of the ground and it's a bottle stopper. And I think it says Gartens. of a halfpenny, but it's so corroded I'm not going to even try and read it until I get home. Wait a minute, what's this? It looks like a bead. I'm gonna to have to take my glove off for this so. Right, gloves off so is it a bead? Please be a bead. I think it's a bead. Yes, it's a bead. Another red bead. I always seem to find red beads here. Fantastic. It's a bead day. Oh, would you look at this? Oh, no. That's a fragment. A fragment of terracotta pipe bowl. Oh, wouldn't it be absolutely wonderful to find one of those holes? It looked like it had some kind of foliage on it. A bit of metal there. Oh, it's fallen. Where's it gone? Oh, I think it's a coin. I think. It's very bent. And uh, over here I found the most beautiful green little bottle. I love little bottles, but little green bottles are even better because they're not as common. So that's going in my bag. Alex has just found the tiniest, <laughs> the tiniest little ground glass stopper oh, still in oh, its... Oh look, it was, it was stripy, blue. Oh see. no. Oh, you know what? That would have been an amazing perfume bottle. Oh. I wonder if the rest of it is there anywhere. It looks pretty broken. <laughs> Oh, that's so, that's so cute though. Maybe we can grind the bottom off that bit of bottleneck. Or blow a new bottle for it. <laughs> <laughs> a tiny button. A little mother of pearl button. Here's a, another piece of pipe stem that's been obviously used as a piece of chalk. So it must have been a common thing. Makes sense really, it would be handy. This is a nice little green bottle. Yeah, it's whole as well. I'm going to keep that. There's a lovely piece of glass here, look. Sort of frosted. It's in the pattern of a flower. Yeah, I'm thinking Christmas decoration. <laughs> and I think there's a pipe bowl peeping out here. Yep. I think it... Oh, it's got a heart on it. And it's a TW pipe. <laughs> we just found the funniest bottleneck. Look at that. <laughs> that was hilarious. I think we're going to take it. <laughs> it's one of those little vials that we find, only this one has got a round bottom. I've got a round bottom. Alex, you can't say that. I think I found the remains of some sort of old clock. A clockwork mechanism. Look, you can see cogs. Cogs in there, look. It's all falling to pieces though. Some sort of instrument. It's really, really knackered. 
Oh my goodness, it's full of cogs. Okay, I've got to take all these cogs. Look at them. Wow, that's Cogosaurus Rex. Cogus Maximus. Cogmageddon. Cog this must have been some kind of. It's had a glass face on here. It's like a ship's clock. Maybe it's not been a clock. Maybe it's been some other kind of meter. That's the face of it there, but you can't make out what it's had on it. No, you can't see anything written on it. That's interesting. I wonder what it was. It's a bottle stopper. got a chip out of it and I think it says garten so I might leave it. I think I just found a car. A toy car. It looks like a 1960s car. That's so cool. Oh I like it. <laughs> So cool. Look at this. It looks like a little bow. A little metal bow. Oh, that's so cute. It'll probably fall apart. I'll try and get it home in one piece. This looks like <laughs> the bottom of a bottle. Can I get it out? Oh, it's stuck in really deep. I'll come back. Okay, I've got a little plastic toy soldier, which has probably come from the later part of the dump. A little bisque hoof, I think. Cow hoof yeah, and so a glass button. But down here, mum's got oh, something. something <laughs> mum's got a few things. Like an archaeological excavation here. This is like face down. The ground like, is directly. really, really compacted. <laughs> Can't get them out. <laughs> I need two hands. Wiggle that with both hands, see if you can get it wiggled loose. <laughs> That's solid. We've got a bottle here, the first one out. I think I saw something written on the side of it. What's it say? I think it's like tablespoons. Tablespoons? It's got like marks. Oh yeah. Maybe it's been like a cod liver oil bottle. Yeah, down the side you can see one, two, three, four. Oh, it's written on the other side. What's this? Fry X. No, wait. Something here. Oh, it's a bit confusing. There's words left, right, and centre. Here comes this one. Pyrex. Pyre oh, it might be a baby's bottle. I think it's a baby's bottle. Oh, it's a baby's bottle. Teach. Oh, teach that would ex. Yeah, that. Okay, that would explain why it's got this on, and it's Pyrex because yeah. um, they might made really hard glass. Yeah, you could sterilise it because it could take the heat. You see. Yeah, because it's got um, quartz in it. It's really hard glass. Ah, oh, that's cool. Bottle. A baby right. bottle. We've never found one of those before, so we'll have to keep it. <laughs> I think this one's loose enough to come out now. Okay, pull it. Let's see. Oh, it's a jar. Oh, it's a jar. <laughs> Not very interesting. It's got something in it. Yeah, I can hear actually something knocking around in there. It's treasure. No, it's, it's dirt. <laughs> it's ash. I think this is my last find of the day. And I'm quite pleased because it's a whole oh, <laughs> dirt won't come out. It's a whole jam or oh, whole marmalade jar. Some kind of preserved jar. And these are always good because we can use them. 
So not a bad last find. things we found. We've got a, um, a huge selection of really random stuff. Yeah, as usual. As usual, <laughs> yeah. But that's what makes it um, exciting, isn't it? We've got loads of cogs, but... So, yeah. we yeah. found the inner workings of a clock, I think. We've tried to clean them up as best we can, but they need a lot more work. Some of them have come up really nice. Yeah, but they're covered in rust, so yeah, good. we love cogs. Um, and then up here, what have we got? This um, beautiful bisque doll of a girl with these beautiful braids. Yeah, really long. I mean, they're cut off there, so they must have been even longer. It's beautiful. Would be lovely hole. Yeah. Um, then we've got an arm, a hoof, um, a piece of a, a bisque doll's head, um, this jug with... I don't know what's around it. Grass. It's like grass, doesn't it? Or rushes or something. Yeah, reeds, something like that. Um, and this amazing paint pan, Reeves paint pan, which actually still has the cobalt blue paint yeah. inside of it. It's Incredibly. amazing. I carefully um, took the ashes and stuff that was compacted in there out and managed to keep a bit of the blue. So. And Reeves still makes paint um, and... Yeah, they, they, uh, they started in the 18th century, uh -huh, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. a really old um, company. Um, and then we've got glass bottle stops, which you can't say much about, and then a selection of things here. Yeah, interesting little things. This amazing little stopper that Alex found. Yeah. It's tiny. You and it see... was in the neck of this bottle, which would have been incredible. It's got blue stripes sort of in stripes it stripes running through it I mean which says to me this was a little Victorian perfume bottle yeah it might have been encased in silver or something like yeah. that really beautiful it's shame it's completely knackered and all that's left is to stop her now really um we've got oh this you said you thought it was off a purse or I a think bag. it's a clasp of a purse or handbag yeah you can see the leather. the leather yeah um we've got a selection of bone buttons bone glass and mother of pearl um, I think these are like tie or, you know. Yeah, tie pins, I think. Yeah, yeah. like, um, yes. <laughs> this coin, which is really, really old, actually. Um, we think it's Georgian, don't we? It could be a Georgian halfpenny, yes, but it's very, very It's warm. knackered, yeah. It's definitely got a man's head on there, and it's yeah. not Queen Victoria. Yeah. And it's older than George V. Yeah. Um, a little plastic man, which looks um, American Civil War, doesn't it? It does, definitely. Yeah. Really looks civil war um another one of our baking bean things we think um a 1960s button <laughs> yeah and so yeah that's that oh oh that's this and this that you found yeah this is i interesting. managed to read the surface of it after cleaning and it turns out to be um a german five fanning dating from 1875 and so on one side it's got um, Deutsches Reich Fenning, and on the reverse it displays the Rhine Saddler, which is the coat of arms of Germany. And the coin was circulated from 1873 to 1914 and was made of um, nickel or copper nickel, which is an alloy of copper that contains nickel and strengthening elements such as iron and manganese. And this coin is dated to 1870-something. I think it's 1875, isn't it? Yeah, I just said 1875. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's got this strange curve on it. And Mum had a theory that this was off a walking stick. Yes, because people would put coins and badges and things on their walking sticks as souvenirs of where they'd been. Yeah, so maybe it was glued onto a walking stick and at some point it's fallen off because it's got a really unusual curve on Although it. Although you had a theory that maybe in after the First World War... 
they ripped it off their walking stick and yeah. threw it away. Yeah, that was, yeah, the war broke out yeah. and they were like, I'm not having that on my walking stick anymore and they've chucked it away, yeah. which is a shame. But we have it now and we can um, appreciate the history of it. Yeah, great find. And so here we have some pretty pieces of glass that we can make things with and this funny melted <laughs> bottleneck. Yeah. And once again, pipes, one here that's been used as chalk. The um, ever elusive um, terracotta, terracotta pipe. We'll get yeah someday. Got two pieces of that. And all these, there's yeah, yeah, three heart pipes. <laughs> Not a surprise. Over here we have a little toy car, and I have something about that as well. So cute. So this is a Fiat 1500 toy car, and it was made in England by Lesney, Matchbox series number 56, and it would have had a plastic like group of luggage on the roof. And it was made in 1960, so it's 61 years old. Oh, that's cute. And I imagine it was in quite new condition when it got thrown away, yeah. probably accidentally. Because the corrosion damage just looks like it's just come from yeah, the, the weather and the elements. Well, the acidic conditions in the rubbish dump will, will have corroded the metal, so. Yeah, that that's cute, I really like it. And then we've got some random vials, and we find um, lots of these in turn-of-the-century dumps, don't we? Yeah. I think these were for pills from chemist shops, but this one's got a rounded bottom, so I'm not sure what that was for. Maybe the same thing. Yeah. They would have had cork lids. They're so thin and delicate. It's amazing how they've survived, to be honest. Golf um, tees. Not yeah. much we can say about those. They've all got brand names on them, but um, we haven't really looked <laughs> them up. They're much just plastic. In them. Yeah. Um, spongeware. We always love finding spongeware. We do. We take a lot of inspiration from yeah. it. And some lovely blue and white transferware. And here's some more metal. This is, I think, an old connector for a battery from an old car or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But it came up so lovely. It did. I think it's gorgeous. And we can use it for yeah. something or other. This is, I think, um, some kind of pinch back um, picture frame. Or, well, it was. It was. <laughs> Gold These would have been the little legs. Yeah, they? it would have kind of stood like that. But, you know, it's, it's, it's knackered. And on the theme of picture frames, this is the decoration from the top of a late Victorian picture frame. Yeah, we've got some great examples. Um, it looks silver, but I think it might be Ooh. either silver-plated, nickel, or just nickel. Yeah. Because when I found it, it was very green. Yeah. And pure silver would be black. Not green. Well, sterling silver sterling. would be. So, yeah, the green kind of um, yeah. is a clue. But, yeah, that's beautiful, and hopefully we'll be able to use that for something as well. Yeah. I think this is the um, maybe the top of some kind of condiment bottle or perfume bottle. Because it has a really nice embossed design, but you can't really see it very well. You can well. see it from underneath there. It's, like, um, engraved. Yeah. But, uh, anyway. Oh, yes, white beads. Beads. So we've got our new bead string already here. These and I think we found those, yeah. those ones there on this and tray. And this one's too melted, you can't find it. These beads were likely can't from... can't find it. You mean we can't what? thread it? Yes. Because yes. <laughs> you said fine. <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, yeah, it's too melted. These are probably off just 20th century um, European jewellery. Yeah, Necklaces, yeah, yeah. bracelets, things like that. But they're gorgeous. We love, we love beads, we in love case beads. you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we go on to our bottles and receptacles. And these are where the most interesting stories of today yes, lie, yes. aren't they? Um, we'll just go through the ones that we don't know too much about. I think these are some kind of medicine bottles. They're gorgeous. Look at the colour. That, they're both three-part mould bottles. They've been blown into a mould of three parts, and they're a beautiful colour, and we love them. Um, this is a viral bottle, yes. which I think you um, looked up. Um, yes, it was um, made with the leftovers from the brewing industry, um, all the malt and things like that and it also had bone marrow added to it which sounds disgusting yeah and it was given to school children during the war as um, a dietary supplement as well well it probably had lots of goodness in it but I can't it, imagine it, it tasted did. very nice well apparently <laughs> children liked it because it was sweet so. oh oh lovely sweet bone marrow and uh, we'll skip these for now <laughs> I'm not sure what this bottle was to be honest I thought it might be a vinegar bottle, but... It's quite pretty. Maybe an olive oil bottle, something like that. Who knows, yeah. 
Um, this turns out to be a baby's uh, bottle. Yeah, which we it took us a while to get, but we did get there in the end. Um, and I th I looked up Pyrex actually, and um, this the the type of glass Pyrex is is called borosilicate glass and it was invented by a German man in the later part of the 19th century. Um, I think he was called Otto Schott, I think that was his name, but that's just off the top of my head. But yeah, um, of course the war came along and um, the um, I think the American company, the Corning um, company, um, took the borosilicate was glass. That the first world war? Yeah. yeah, and um, developed Pyrex after a while, and um, it was branded as a an alternative to the German um, yeah, yeah. version because no one wanted to buy German stuff after the war, yeah. um, unfortunately. So um, the American brand took off, where the German brand was kind of just left behind. And Pyrex was used in baby bottles, of course, because it can withstand the heat of sterilization. Um, yeah. But they would have put scalding hot water in to sterilise yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So borosilicate glass is highly shock and thermal shock resistant. And it's used in, um, uh, like, chemistry, uh, you know, equipment, you know, bot chemistry bottles and all that. Okay, so these are our three most beautiful bottles, I think. The beautiful well, colour. That one. Oh, and this one, yes, of course. I love that little one there. Little poison bottle. Um, but this is Benbow's dog mixture. It's a wonderful bottle. And I have a bit of information about that. Um, they, this bottle probably dates from about um, 1910. And they were situated at 2 Bartholomew Close, London, and 10 Station Road, Shortlands, Kent. The company was founded in 1835 and went into liquidation in, on the 25th of June, 1959. So they ran for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, but in an advertisement of 1927, they claim their dog mixture to be recognised as one of the sure remedies for distemper, jaundice, worms and the ailments common to all breeds of dogs. Of course, this is an outlandish claim because there is actually no cure for distemper and nowadays dogs get vaccinated against it. So perhaps it went out of business when um, everyone realized that this was just basically a quack medicine for dogs yeah and there was no um proof that any of it actually worked yeah the quack medicines didn't even spare animals back then no so it probably did absolutely no good to the dog whatsoever no, maybe a mild tonic and that's it yeah and then in the middle here we've got another bottle which i really like the shape of this one and it's that is adam's essence of rennet glasgow and rennet was used in cheese making, and a lot of people and farms, of course, made their own cheese. Yeah, so that's probably where how this bottle was used to make yeah. cheese. And then our two most fascinating finds of the day. Absolutely wonderful information. And which one do you want to start with? Well, I think we'll start with Vino's, and I think Vino's. a lot of people will probably recognise the, the name Vino's as a cough medicine that's still on the market today. But... Um, I did a bit of research and came up with quite an incredible story. In the early 20th century, William Henry Vino, later Sir William Henry Vino, became famous worldwide for his Vino's lightning cough cure. But William had a secret. He was, in fact, born William Reynard Varney in 1866 and grew up in the small village of Sorby in Wigtonshire, Scotland. His father was the local gamekeeper and at the age of 14, William was working as an assistant in the village store and post office. In 1884, at the age of 17, William ran away to sea, getting a job as a cabin boy aboard a steamer bound for New York. Here, it seems he jumped ship and found a job with a Dr. Mackay, who had a travelling medicine show. William travelled with Dr. Mackay to the notorious western town of Deadwood in South Dakota, as a dispenser and general medical assistant. Deadwood had been established illegally in 1874 on land belonging to the Lakota people, who considered the area of the Black Hills as sacred. But gold was discovered there, and by 1876 Deadwood was a town of over 25,000 inhabitants. 
It attracted prospectors and entrepreneurs from all over the world, and because it was outside the jurisdiction of the non-native civil authorities, became one of the most lawless towns in America, and associated with such characters as Wild Bill Hickok and Calamity Jane. Deadwood would also have been a prime target for travelling medicine shows, touting their quack cure-all medicines concocted by unscrupulous showmen claiming to be doctors and professors. It is hardly surprising then that we next find 25-year-old William in the 1891 census for England and Wales, staying at the Oddfellows Arms in Bridge End in South Wales, with his name and occupation recorded as Professor William Reynard Varney, Professor of Medicine. That same year, William returned to America, and three years later in Pittsburgh, on the 24th of August, 1894, he patented his Venos cough cure. Directly after this, he changed his name to William Henry Vino. William returned to Britain in 1897, where, in Manchester, he founded the Vino Drug Company. In 1910, William officially changed his name by deed poll and in 1920 was to gain one of the highest honours in the land when he was knighted by King George V. In 1923 he became Mayor of Altrincham where he lived in Cheshire. But William's life was to take a downward spiral. In 1925 he sold his company for £500,000 to Beecham's, a decision he was later to deeply regret. On the 10th of March 1933, William took his own life while out shooting rabbits in the grounds of his home. The coroner's verdict was suicide due to temporary insanity. He was 63 years old. So that's an amazing story, I think. Yeah, it is. But um, his legacy lives on today because his medicines, uh, his venous cough cure is still sold all over the world. And Which there it is. It's incredible, really. What so, next time it? you see a humble bottle of Vino's on the shelf, um, remember this incredible adventure that um, William had and how it came to be. Yeah, and the whole thing about him changing his name and where he actually got the recipe from yeah, this mixture from is all a bit shady. Bit, yeah. It's. <laughs> I like. I, I think that he might have taken it maybe without permission. Yes, he and, changed um, his name so that they wouldn't make the connection. Exactly, because yeah. he's, he's, it's very unusual that um, that he changed his name. Yeah. I mean, that is not a usual Especially thing. Especially as soon as he patented it. Yeah, patented it, quickly changed his name. Yeah. It's almost <laughs> like he'd nicked the idea from someone else yeah, over this, in America. This Dr. Mackay, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've got there a bit go. of a soft spot for old William. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was he was a, an interesting man. Yeah, definitely, an amazing life. Um, and then we have this bottle here, which also has um, a very surprising history when we we looked it up. Okay, so um, we found out this was a what's called a Lysol bottle, which was a kind of disinfectant, and it's a crown top there. Um, and yeah, it would have been blown into a mold and it's got loads of awesome bubbles in it. Yeah. So it is a beautiful, beautiful bottle. And but on, on the top it says not to be taken. And then poison. And the later, um, after 1920, they had the name embossed um, Lysol on the bottle. So this means that this is pre-1920, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when I started to research this, I went to Wikipedia and they had an article on Lysol. And they stated that the first Lysol branded disinfectant was, was introduced in 1889 by Gustav Raupenstrauch um, to help the end of co the cholera epidemic in Germany. However, um, I did some research and it seems the cholera epidemic in Germany occurred in the winter of 1892 to 93 but that could have just been Hamburg um, but there's another German company called Schulk that claims that in April 1889 the merchants Rudolf Schulk and Julius Mayer met in a store in downtown Hamburg to sign a contract that laid the foundation for the Schulk and Mayer company 
to launch the world's first ever branded disinfectant Lysol. Hmm. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, the dates don't match up, do they? In 1892, Lysol was used to help stem the cholera epidemic in Hamburg, resulting in Lysol's enormous growth worldwide. In 1893, the city of Hamburg awarded Schulk and Mayer a gold-plated certificate of honour for helping control the epidemic. So surely they wouldn't have given them um, a certificate if it had been this other person that Wikipedia claims to have introduced it. It just shows that you have to do your own research. Don't always take Wikipedia's word for it or any other source because a lot of other people on the internet have copied Wikipedia's information also and... Um, sometimes a mistake can be perpetuated in that yeah. way. Later, Lysol was used in a similar way as an aid against the deadly Spanish flu pandemic of 1918-1919. However, the ingredients of Lysol were highly poisonous. In the Argus newspaper, Melbourne, Australia, on the 10th of January 1912, was the following story. Lysol poisoning, fashions in suicide, During 1911, a record was established for poisoning cases and by far the greatest agent for suicide by poisoning was Lysol. It is generally known that this form of poisoning produces a horrible death, but it has become popular and the poison is easily obtainable. The article goes on to say, some attempts have been made to restrict the use of Lysol, but the pharmacy board, which administers the Poisons Act, does not feel that Lysol should be made more difficult to obtain. And there are literally thousands of reported cases of Lysol poisonings, either deliberate or accidental, suicides, murders, and and there's even um, lots of advertisements um, recommending women to use Lysol for feminine hygiene and a means of birth control. That's just it's absolutely not, yes, horrifying. Horrible. But there were thousands of cases, I couldn't count them all, in the newspapers of uh, Lysol suicides, which yeah. is absolutely awful. And, you know, um, Mum was reading one out. I mean, some of the, if they survived, they'd actually be locked up in prison, yeah, incarcerated, su- suicide. for being so suicidal. Um, they'd actually drink this horrific poison and they threw them in jail. But of course, um, mental health was not understood. It wasn't taken into consideration. And it was a terrible sin and, you know, it was a punishable offence. But um, it's, it's just tragic, really. After the First World War, there was a rush by companies to claim the brand name of Lysol after the German patent was suspended. It is unclear where the patent went from there, but several companies produced products of a similar nature, including Jay's Fluid. Lysol is now a brand name used on cleaning products distributed by Reckitt Benkisser, LLC of Parsifany, New Jersey in America. So this bottle turns out, um, I was very pleased to find it because I haven't found a bottle like this before. No, we haven't found one of these. Um, And it turns out it has this absolutely horrific, horrific history of, you know, thousands of people, people suicide, murder, accidental death, all All thanks to this liquid. In fact, Australia was um, particularly um, well known at the time for its Lysol suicide. But I don't understand because... um, We've read about the horrific death. You know, it was not quickly. It no, was, it was, it not was quick. a slow and painful It was death. horrible. So, yeah. uh, you know, just um, imagine the desperation of the people who actually consumed been. this. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's really, it really Poor is things. tragic. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for this week's Tip Ratching Adventure. And once again, we'd like to say a huge thank you to all the people who support our channel. Yeah. Um, All the people that take the time and trouble to comment and help us in any other way. We're so, so grateful to you. And to everyone who has recently been following us on Instagram. Yes, um, we do need more Instagram followers if you want to go over there and take a look. Um, We put extra things on there, photographs and information. And yeah, extra history as well that we don't always have time to tell on our videos. So... Yeah, so head on over there. A big thank you to all of our patron supporters, everyone who has donated to us. 
through and Ko-fi, yes, um, PayPal, PayPal. We appreciate all and of you from our Amazon wish list. Yeah, well. that's yeah. We we recently received a pair of waders. Two pairs. Two pairs. Two pairs. Two pairs of waders. Yeah, yeah so and we are you. so excited about getting out there <laughs> and using them. So, um, okay, we're gonna say goodbye and we'll see you again next Sunday. Bye. Bye. Later, Lysol was used in a similar way as an aid against the deadly spla- Splanish. <laughs> Splanish. Oh no. As an aid against the deadly Splanish. Not the Splanish. The splanish? Sound. They really sound like terrible monsters. Oh, ah, the Splanish are coming. <laughs> Run. Oh, I can't do it now.